I'm a storyteller. So I tell the story, and I tell the story in my jugs. My jugs reflect the scarification. My jugs reflect the rite of passage. My jug reflects the struggle. I'm doing it to honor my ancestors. I'm the black potter. Now the history of the face jugs is that in Africa they had ancestor worship. When they took them into slavery, they took them to the islands to acclimate them. They picked up voodoo and all that hoodoo stuff. And then when they got to the United States, the missionaries quickly tried to convert them to Christianity. So they amalgamated all those three religions, ancestor worship in Africa, voodoo in Jamaica, and Christianity. And they came up with the ugly jug. The ugly jug premise is anything that you possess, your hat, your clothing, your pots and pans, your spirit resides in it. And so when you die, they put it on your grave. You weren't allowed to have a grave marker because they did not consider you a person. You were a chattel. And so you put the grave marker on the, on the grave and it scared the devil away so your soul could go to heaven. That's what they believed. The thing about the face jug for me is to tell the story of what was going on at that time. Now, Sleep Potter Dave was a, a slave who was owned by some people in, in uh, Edgefield, South Carolina. And Dave, as a young boy, grew up on the uh, plantation. So one day, they asked him would he like to learn how to throw. So the person that owned him, they taught him how to throw. But also, they taught him how to read and write and set type. They had a newspaper company called the, the, the Hive. And Dave could set, type, read, and write. The one thing that I do now in honor of Slave Potter Dave, I write things on my jug, like I can read. Now, they, were, they could write and read, but sometimes they would spell read, R-E-E-D instead of R-E-A-D. And sometimes they would write things that were phonetically. And he would write things on them, like, uh, I belong to Mr. Miles, where the pot boils in the oven. Give me silver, give me gold. They're not good for your soul. He, he would write all kinds of things on the jugs. And then he would sign it, L-M, that was the people that owned it. And then he would put Dave, and he would put the year. So I think what I'm going to make now is a face jug body. So I usually make about four or five bodies, and then the, the revelation or the inspiration of what I'm making comes later. I'm more concerned with trying to stay with the African tradition. Everything that you do of joining together is also a design. And also, when I, when I get this to the kill, I can put glass here and have it run down. I'll put scarification, I'll put the scratching, I'll do all kind of other things to it later. But I want to get it together today, right now, so that it will be ready to go when I, when I get to that point. Because different things come to me at different times. And I just, I gotta be aware and ready to, ready to work when I get a, an idea. I'm not striving for realism. Uh, you know, I, I want to uh, approximate it and do what the slave potters did. And I think I'm a continuation of what they did. So I make things that refer to the, the black uh, experience, you know. I'm trying to keep the story alive because if we don't keep the story alive, we're doomed to, to, to do it again.